even if you don't have your own, you can always borrow somebody else's. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm not mad at her. I'm just, I'm just triggered. <laughs> And you, and you still good as long as you come within them 10 15 for whatever your doctor's visit uh time is we're <laughs> vegan protein shake which should hold me until I get back to the house. I forgot my water in the drinking car but I can shake this with my protein shake so I have all of my vitamins and I'll go over the vitamins that I'm taking in another video but for now it looks like a lot. I know right? <laughs> We're gonna talk to my OB today and get some things done and come up with an action plan going forward but I'll keep you guys here on this journey. Some of I told y'all that it's important to write down all the questions or concerns that you have so like when you talk to your doctor you won't be like confused or forget things to say i love my notebook i got this out of home goods we have parents that come in to their appointment and they'll bring their little baby and as soon as i come out and call them they like oh, wow. <laughs> it's like it's not for you exactly. it's just for your mother exactly oh my goodness <laughs> Kids, but these rooms are so cute. Like it's just I don't yeah, know. It's, I like the rooms. You know, it's made for right, pediatrics. Exactly, you know what yeah. I'm saying? I don't know what. When I, I walked up, I was like, "Oh my god!" You know, it could have been a trigger, but I'm like, you know what? No, it's not. I've I cried enough. Because mm -hmm. we tried to like, and that's true too. Yeah. You're coming into a place where you see. See, that's yeah. another thing I didn't think about. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about, oh, this is what you're gonna go through after you have your baby. Yeah, not but, thinking about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, it's okay. Yeah, you know, that's good that you said that because I don't think a lot of people think that. It's not a bad thing. It's just that when you haven't experienced something like yeah. that. or Because I went, like, when my husband been married eight years, mm -hmm. and we've been pretty much trying to conceive yeah. that time. We got pregnant in 2017, you know, miscarriage. And yeah. then five years later, nothing was happening. Then we got pregnant just now. And it was so crazy after that visit. Like, I went to... Yeah, that's why her. I looked. I was like, yeah, yeah I, I went to talk to her. Yes, I went to talk to her about how why I'm not falling pregnant, 
And then literally, because that video was January 17th or the 18th. Yeah. And then I ovulated on January 31st, and then boom, it that's, happened. That's why I'm looking, and I'm like, <laughs> wait a minute. Vanessa went trying to conceive. Dang, she conceived. Right. Like that is so, and now I'm like, oh, no. Right. So, but you know what? Yeah. It's not over yet. Right. <laughs> It's not over yet. It's not. Now, did you get an ultrasound or anything done? No. Or just the labs that she sent you to Just do? the lab. Okay. So the only thing that I, that I could get was maybe like get a book. Like sh I should have called and sent her to add HCG test mm -hmm. to the lab that she already had. But I was so distraught. That wasn't on my mind. I was just looking at the line go from positive on the pregnancy test to completely nothing. That just was a lot to see. Because I was looking for a um, HCG level recent. I don't see one of those. Yeah, she either. didn't order it. Because you haven't had a period since January, right? Or um, did you have one this month? That wasn't a period. That was me miscarrying. So I started spotting. Uh, um, passed out here on the 14th. So I started bleeding heavy on the 14th. Um, I was spotting on the 12th and the 13th. But I don't spot before my period. They come right on. They just come, yeah. So the 12th and the 13th, I spotted. And then that's when the 14th, I started having like heavy cramps. And that that's abnormal. And I had blood clots, and I don't have that on my period. And then that's when I seen like this thing pass out of me. So you were basically like four weeks now, maybe three. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, four. like early, early. It was like very, very, very early. So how are you feeling emotionally? Are you still loving and caring and joyful and peaceful in your oh, life? Oh yes, okay. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Listen, God is my strength. If it's not for Yahuwah, I just don't know. Yeah. You know, so I, I need my strength. So I just and, and keep like my I faith. said, it's it's not over. Right. It's not over. Even if you don't have your own, you can always borrow somebody else's. Oh no, absolutely not. I don't want <laughs> you want your own. I want my own. I'm I want to my own. I'm the same I know. <laughs> I want to carry my own baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 120 over 82. Oh, that is amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem with that one. Thank God. Yep. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't deal with you. <laughs> she is the whole truth. I love that nurse. She is so funny. So, little light work. <laughs> I'm always calling little light work. I got my heels on. The lady was like, oh, you're looking so dressed up. What do you know what are you doing today? I said, I'm just feeling good about myself. She was like, it's so funny you said that because... Another girl came in today and she had miscarriage as well and she was dressed up and I asked her why and she was like, you know, I'm just trying to, you know, feel good about myself and keep myself up. Yeah, we got to make sure our mental is good. We got to check on our mental. So, um, how have you been feeling since that time? Um, I've been okay. Just, you know, what can I do? <laughs> okay. So, let's see here. Blood work done on the 18th. Normal blood count. Uh, pain level when they did A1C level was um, normal, no evidence of prediabetes, all the ovarian hormone levels look normal. And so we have not had a follow up ultrasound, which we can do. So, with that one, I had a question. Uh huh. Let me get the papers. So, since we're talking about ultrasound, I was just trying to see when they do the ultrasound, can they also check the size of my uterine lining to make sure it's not thin? It so, will definitely look at the lining. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's good. And uh, what, what do you think about my progesterone level? I know it's different between luteal phase, follicle phase, and yeah, those I was things. Say so it depends on where you are. Yeah, exactly. Because I look at like like you said, the totality of all the labs, right. and not just you know one particular thing. One particular. Lab. Gotcha. Yeah, exactly. But overall, everything looked normal. Okay. Because um, I do track my own luteal phase at home mm -hmm. from like when I approximately think I ovulate regularly, and I think I'm about 12, so I believe that's about normal. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just gonna keep tracking that. Yes, and you did, if you done any of the predictor kits, the ovulation predictor kits? Yeah. Kit? Okay, mm -hmm. alrighty. And that showed that you were ovulating? Right. So mm -hmm. that's good, yeah. Okay. okay, yeah. Any other questions or anything like that you think? Um, when do you suggest a person try again after? You can try it as soon as, as you, you want to. Come here, bring that Showing people that did not wait because they're not, they're not, they don't want to wait. Right. Um, uh, there's no problems with just going ahead and starting. Gotcha. Okay. I think that was pretty much you already had just automatically did the ultrasound thing. That was one of my biggest things. 
Okay, so then we'll just follow up as needed, okay? Needs my mind. All right, good, good, good. Come on with me. All right. All right. <laughs> oh, I vlog with well, your nurse, no, I vlog for you too. Oh, do you yeah. really? <laughs> You're updating people on my journey. That's so cute. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Have you seen the, uh, the documentary, uh, Eggs Over Easy? Oh, Eggs Over, no, I got to okay, look into so that. Okay, documentary about women, um, especially women of color, and they're, they're basically uh, documenting their issues with um, infertility. Wow, Eggs Over Easy, that uh -huh. is crazy. Easy. Yeah. <laughs> that is a cute name, though, for the situation. Name. <laughs> exactly. One of my stories, this is the executive producer, D'Angela Proctor. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna look at. I'm gonna look that up. Yep, eggs over easy. Straight right. ahead, and then uh, Diane will check you out. Okay, okay thank you. Have a great one. All right. Thanks. I need a moment. <laughs> Talking about it again, especially with the doctor, it really just spark up more emotions for me. It was when she started to look in the system about an HCG test, and and she was like, "Oh, you need to go to the hospital." And I'm just like. No, like, <laughs> I did not. For one, I'm not going to get that high behind hospital bill just for them to do me like they did me last time and sit up here and tell me what I already know. I'm not mad at her. I'm just, I'm just triggered. Just brought up a lot of emotions from the last time I had a chemical pregnancy. It's like, I feel like when you have a chemical pregnancy or a very early stage pregnancy, I feel like you get treated different from someone who, who had like somebody who was eight weeks or more. People feel like, oh, that person was pregnant, pregnant. I don't care if you was three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, you pregnant. If you take a pregnancy test and you get two lines on a pregnancy test, you're pregnant, period. And I'm not talking about the evaporation line. I, in my previous video, I explained that. I was pregnant. I know she know I'm pregnant. So like I said, I'm not mad with the doctor. It's just it triggered me because I remember when I got pregnant in 2017 and I had told somebody, you know, that I was pregnant. And they was like, they consider that a miscarriage? You know, those things that, like, that's what people got to be very careful when you say stuff to people because those things stick with people. That comment has stuck with me over the years. Like, over the years, they consider that a miscarriage? Um... Yeah, they do. Still a miscarriage. I'm sorry, I'm just uh, annoyed. And then the nurse, the nurse was like, oh, and then if you don't, you could just, you know, get somebody else, baby. <laughs> what? I don't want nobody else, child. I'm not into the surrogacy thing. I'm not into adopting. Like, I'm not into any of that. That's just me. You know, that's other people are into that type of stuff. I'm not. I want my own child. I'm glad that I have this platform to be an advocate for those who don't speak up about this type of stuff and those who don't show this side. We don't want nobody else's kids. We want to experience the same thing you were able to experience. The joy of going through the stages of a baby developing in your body, getting your little baby bump, and then at the end of all that, holding your baby, pushing your baby out, or C-section, we don't want no C-section, but you know, if that's what has to happen, but pushing your baby out, holding your baby for the first time, Knowing that all the pain that you went through was worth it. Because at the end of all that pain, you have your bundle of joy. The baby that looked just like you or look just like your husband. A seed that you can train up so that when they get older, they won't depart. That you can train up and give that baby back to God. That's my mindset on it. To just have your, your seed run around here. So that when you gone and you get older and you pass, you have a legacy. You know what I'm saying? Like... I was not expecting this video to go this way. But like I said, it just really triggered me. And then, you know, the nurse saying that company that she made. And I know that she doesn't understand, you know, who are on a TZ journey. They're going through some type of medical issue or they're going through some type of issues within their body. And they have not conceived. There is a lot of people that understand how to be empathetic and understand not to say certain things. That Every woman is not created equally. And you have a lot of women out here who struggle to conceive. Okay, let me tell you for instance, when I posted on my Facebook that I had a miscarriage, I had people in my comment section of that post that opened up and told me their story. One girl said she had six miscarriages back to back before she had her two kids. Another girl said she had went through a miscarriage. She had a few miscarriages. 
then she had a son, and she did have a daughter. And I felt bad because when she had posted that she had her daughter, I was so, like, taken back. I was like, dang, bro, like, she pregnant? Like, congratulations. But in my mind, I'm thinking, like, it just seemed like she got pregnant easy. But then when she told me what she had to go through, to get the babies i was like wow i need to be careful because when you go through your own situation you can forget that other people go through things too it's just that they do not share their situation publicly because some people they're not like me they're not transparent not the calling that god has on their life you know so because that's not a calling that God has on their life to share that publicly, this this platform ain't for everybody. And sharing your life, that's not for everybody. But for those who God choose to do it, trust me, it's reaching. It's reaching people. And people really need it. So that's why I share my life. That's why I share and be transparent with what I'm feeling, what I'm going through, what's going on. Of course, I ain't sharing everything. Ain't nobody finna sit up and share every single detail of their life. But you know what I mean. You know what I'm saying? We share things that we know are going to help other people because there's so many people out there that's suffering and suffering in silence and huh you don't have to suffer in silence you really don't you know what i'm saying but i do understand like if sharing your life is a bit much because sometimes i'll be thinking to myself why am i telling everybody my darn business but at the same time like i said um you don't have to suffer in silence you know mm -hmm.